the peregrine falcon, the fastest creature on Earth, nature's top gun. Its scientific name is Falco peregrinus, which means falcon wanderer. The peregrine is a hunter of other birds, which it catches by climbing high and dropping like a guided missile, called stooping, striking its prey and knocking it to the ground. Peregrines have been clocked at up to 220 miles per hour in a dive. Man has prized the peregrine for its hunting abilities in the ancient sport of falconry. Peregrines are about the size and weight of a crow, but with sharp and powerful talons. Adult birds have blue-gray wings, pale undersides, white faces with a black stripe on each cheek, and large dark eyes. Sleek and elegant, the fearless falcon prefers to nest on narrow rock ledges on high cliffs over bodies of water, places where only the bravest of people will venture. The rugged bluffs of the upper Mississippi River Valley provide perfect habitat for the peregrine. Some bluffs rise more than 600 feet above the river below. Sheer cliffs of limestone, sandstone, and dolomite stand as sentinels, guarding the valley and cradling the areas or nest sites of the peregrine. Here they have flourished for thousands of years. In the early 1940s, a Wisconsin biologist, Joseph Hickey, determined that there were more than 200 pairs of peregrines east of the Mississippi River. But the relative abundance of peregrines was not to last. In the 1960s, scientists discovered that DDT was interfering in eggshell formation of birds of prey. These birds were laying eggs so thin they were crushed by the weight of the incubating adult. By 1968, the peregrine population was completely eradicated east of the Mississippi River. The upper Mississippi River Valley entered the 1970s without a single peregrine. Despite the bleak situation, Dr. Tom Cade at Cornell University and Bob Anderson pioneered efforts to reintroduce peregrines to the Midwest. Well, I became involved when the Cornell project started taking off in the mid-70s. Uh, the idea of, at that time, it, things were looking really bleak. I thought the species were just becoming, everything was on the decline. The bald eagle was on decline, the golden eagle, the peregrine falcon, it just, everything looked so bleak. And then here Dr. Cade at Cornell conceived an idea of captive breeding birds and built huge facilities, huge chambers, and, and just the idea of breeding an endangered species to save it, and, uh, I just, just fell into it. It just became my life. And I began a captive breeding program starting in the mid-70s and produced the first peregrines to breed in the Midwest. Finally, in 1987, peregrines returned to the mid-continent when MF1, a falcon produced in captivity by Bob Anderson, fledged three young from the multi-foods tower in Minneapolis. Right now, it's just it's, it's actually been removed from the endangered species list. It's recognized as threatened in the state of uh, Minnesota on the state list, endangered on Wisconsin state list, and endangered on Iowa's list. But on the federal level, it's been removed. The peregrine restoration work of the Raptor Resource Project involves continual monitoring of nesting birds and banding of all young born. We need to put a band on every single baby that we release and, and every young falcon produced in the wild. So we have a wonderful scientific opportunity here to study a founding population, both behavior-wise by seeing maybe how far the males go and how far the females go and things like that, who goes from a building to a cliff or from a cliff to a building. And it's really interesting. We're learning that the peregrine falcon really isn't a peregrine nator. It's kind of a homebody. The females that from this nest will probably go off and breed within 200 miles of right here, the males within 70 miles. We also take a blood sample because we created this population. It started from ground zero. Hundreds of us working together in the Midwest did releases and uh, started a population from captive red stock from ground zero. And if we take good pedigree records from that foundation stock and blood samples from that foundation stock in birds that are breeding in the wild, we, can ha we have a genetic fingerprint of this funded founding population. It's an unparalleled sci scientific opportunity. Today, birders can watch the falcons on bluff faces, buildings, and power plant smokestacks. Some nesting sites even have nest box cameras feeding live video to websites for anyone to watch and enjoy from their home or office. Bluff owners can enjoy the satisfaction of knowing they are providing habitat to these beautiful and majestic birds. My family has lived up here for four generations and we feel very blessed to, to live in this beautiful place on the Mississippi River Bluffs. And one of the great things about living here is the, the wildlife and nature, of course, especially the peregrine falcons. Uh, since they've come back now from being nearly extinct, 
it's been great fun uh, watching them uh, fly here and, and nest here and every year there's a another clutch of chicks that uh, fledge into the wild to restore the population and it, it, it also made us very glad that we had permanently protected this land with a conservation easement. Uh, it, it gives the family great peace of mind to know that this habitat will be here for wildlife and the falcons uh, for as long as they want to live here and, and they can live in relative peace uh, free from development or other human disturbances. The Mississippi Valley Conservancy is a nonprofit land trust headquartered in La Crosse, Wisconsin and covering a seven county territory. The mission of MVC is conserving the diverse landscapes and natural areas of southwestern Wisconsin for future generations through cooperative means. Most of the private landowners up and down the Mississippi River really love their peregrines. They, they really do. I mean, this is nature's top gun. It's the fastest bird in the world. It's, and they also have some ownership. And so I'm hoping that we can use, use the peregrine to help protect, too, the, you know, the wonderful few bluffs that we have. And I say few because this is you know, some of the rarest geology in the world. We are especially pleased when we can protect both scenic beauty and habitat for rare or endangered plants and animals, including the peregrine falcon. I'm Tim Jacobson, and please join us next time for MVC Explorers.